In this video, we will be discussing vertical angles. First, let's talk about how vertical angles are formed. So vertical angles are formed by intersecting lines. You may remember that intersecting lines are two lines that cross. And here's a diagram to support what that would look like. In this diagram, there are two intersecting lines, which gives us two pairs of vertical angles. The angles that are across from each other are congruent to one another. So these two angles would be congruent. And then these two angles would be congruent. Based on that, the relationship is that vertical angles are congruent. And sometimes when we are looking at diagrams, it's helpful to have like a little quick tip to try and recognize different angle relationships. So my quick tip for identifying vertical angles is that you can identify or look for the intersecting lines by looking for an X shape. If I look at the diagram over to the left, when I drew the two intersecting lines, it resembles the letter X. Now that we know how vertical angles are formed and their relationship to one another, let's take a look at some sample questions. So remember that the angles that are across from each other that are formed by the intersecting lines are congruent. So if I look at number one, I see that given angle of 93, therefore X also has a measure of 93 degrees. In number two, a very similar idea, we're given an angle of 110, therefore X is 110 degrees. Number three wants us to draw the diagram ourselves. It says draw a diagram to represent the following. Line JK and line LM intersect at N. Okay, so I'm gonna start by drawing two lines. Remember that when we draw lines, they have arrows on the end. And I know that the point of intersection is N. It asks us to identify a pair of congruent vertical angles in our diagram. Well, as we talked about before, there's really two different pairs of vertical angles that are formed here. So one option would be angle J and M is congruent to angle L and K. The other angle J and L is congruent to angle M and K. If you have trouble identifying them from the picture, again, you could draw like the little curves that we talked about before, indicating that the angles are congruent. Or if you prefer color coding, we can kind of color code and say, well, these two angles are across from each other, therefore they're congruent. And these two are across from each other, therefore they are congruent. Okay. Let's take a look at some more examples. In number four, we're given the angle of 32 degrees, X is across from it, formed by the intersecting lines, therefore X is also 32. In number five, it might look like at first glance that we're not given enough information, but we should recall that that little square indicates that that's a 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna put that information in first and then therefore X is 90 degrees. Okay. Moving on to number six, now we start to look at a picture that could potentially be a little bit more complicated because we actually have three intersecting lines rather than two. So when that happens, you get three pairs of congruent vertical angles. So again, we wanna look for the ones that are across from each other. So if I look at the 97, the angle that it's across or opposite from is this angle here, so that becomes 97. If you need to, you could always use a highlighter, a different color pen to kind of mark off an X shape that's our intersecting lines. Remember the X indicates intersecting lines and therefore I can help me, it helps me see, okay, 97 and 97. If I use similar logic for the other measures, this would be 32 degrees and then the angle that the problem actually asks us about 
x would be 51 degrees. So that would be our answer for number six. Number seven, similar idea. X and 65 are across from each other. Therefore, they're congruent. 73 and y are also congruent to each other. Now let's take it up a little bit and let's take a look at an example that involves some algebra. So I once again see the same repetitive relationship that I have intersecting lines and therefore the vertical angles that are formed are congruent to one another. So using that knowledge, I know that 6x plus 14 must be equal to 122. So I'm going to take that information and write an equation 6x plus 14 equals 122. And now we're just going to use our algebra skills to isolate the variable. So I get 6x equals 108 after I move 14 to the other side. Divide by 6, and I get x is equal to 18. Now this problem only asks us to solve for x. Um, it doesn't ask us to check, but remember that you can always check an algebra problem. So let's say I wanted to, if I plug 18 back in for x over here, I will in fact get 122 degrees, so I know that that checks out. Okay. And for our last problem, A, B, and C, D intersect at E, and we wanna find the measure of angle A, E, C. So that means we wanna figure out angle A, E, C is over here where the four X minus five is. We need to figure out that angle measure. Once again, I'm gonna set up an algebraic equation so 4x minus 5 equals x plus 16. And I'm going to work to get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. So I got x is equal to 7, but recall that we want to find the measure of angle AEC. So I'm going to just take that information and plug it into the expression 4x minus 5. And when I do that, I'm going to get 23 degrees as my answer. Hopefully this video was a good introduction and helped you understand vertical angles and their relationship.